Good morning and welcome to our 10 minutes at 10 o'clock reflection as we think and ponder upon all that thy kingdom come means to us. It's a real joy for me to welcome dear lovely Di today as she calls to mind her thoughts surrounding thy kingdom come. But before we begin, let's start with the special prayer, the collect for thy kingdom come. Let us pray. Almighty God, your ascended son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the real joys for me thus far in this journey is discovering just how personal the kingdom of God is for us individually. We've heard from Amanda, from Mark and myself, but now we're going to hear from dear Di. Di, I always begin with these words. They are deliberately open and vague, so I don't guide you down a rabbit hole. So Di, if I say the words, thy kingdom come to you, how would you respond? Right. I strongly believe that the kingdom has already come and that we are living in it right now. It came at the coming of Jesus, who, as we know, was given all authority and power in heaven and on earth by God, his father. But we are still to pray, thy kingdom come. And that's simply because there are still many who neither accept Christ as king nor live his rule of love. And that's why we see all around us the many injustices in our world, the wars and oppression, Christians being killed for their faith, people starving and dying because the world's resources are not shared fairly. The list goes on, as you might guess. So when we pray, thy kingdom come, we're actually praying for the coming of the kingdom in its fullness, or if you like, its perfection here on earth as it is in heaven. I guess we can liken heaven to the perfect and best room of the kingdom, our spiritual home. Just as we keep a clean and tidy room in our earthly home, ready for the unexpected guest or caller. However, when we ask God for the coming of the kingdom in its fullness, we are in fact praying that he'll change the hearts of those who are his enemies so that they will see the error of their ways and come to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and King. Then to follow his example of selfless, unconditional, sacrificial love. In effect, we are praying for the coming of the day when all evil, all sin and all rebellion against God is finally done away with. And in praying those words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven, we must also be mindful that as Christians, we each have a part to play in making that happen. So we need always to be sure that in all we do and think and say, we are indeed doing the will of God. The kingdom, the kingdom doesn't come with a great clap of thunder at the end of time though. Jesus himself tells us that it comes in unexpected ways and grows in our midst, sort of secretly. It comes in quirky little moments when people do extraordinary things, take personal risks, like we've seen so often recently. And we can think, ah, yes, 
These are lives in which God is showing through and giving us a glimpse of his kingdom. I'm going to finish with a, a poem by Raymond Sides. It's called Jesus, the Kingdom of God. And bearing in mind that we are praying for at least five of our friends, if not more. We carry the kingdom of God with us. He's with us wherever we go. It's the kingdom Jesus proclaimed as he taught in this world below. The kingdom of God now stands before you, living in you and me. But had it not been for the blood of Jesus, there'd have been no kingdom for you or me. Many of us are filled with the kingdom of God and our lights are shining bright, but there are some who have let their lamps grow dim because of sin surrounding their light. So let's trim the wicks on our lamps to make our light shine bright. And then the kingdom of God will be seen in us through the darkest of all nights. Perhaps some of you have never received the kingdom of God and perhaps don't understand what I'm saying. But if you repent of your sins and truly change your ways, then you'll be given this kingdom of God just by simply praying. Ask Jesus to forgive for you for all of your sins and ask him to come into your heart. And Jesus, the kingdom of God will give you everlasting life and a brand new start. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Um, I used the poem when I was talking just a couple of days ago. I, I love, I, I'm not known for my poetry, I've got to say, but that was a beautiful poem and, and it really spoke to me. I also love your analogy of, of the kingdom of God and being like the front room. My, my grand, many years, she's been dead, bless her, many, many years now. Um, but she lived in a, a very stereotypical two up, two down. The front room you never, ever went in. It was always yeah. pristine. So whenever I think of my grand now and think of her pristine front room, I will think of you and your, your uh, analogy of the kingdom, which I think is wonderful. Well, it came to me while I was doing that. Yeah. Um, and Because I've always thought the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom on earth were separate things. Yeah. And then I thought, no, it's not. It's all part of the One same the same. Thing. That's how I feel. That's it's how not I feel. tainted by sin. No, that's right. Yeah, that's how. It's an, it's an absolute joy, as always, to share time with you and hear all about your, your learned, very learned insights. So thank you um, for taking the time out to share them with me and with us all. Um, traditionally, in um, these uh, 10 minutes at 10 o'clock slots and we end with the words of the Lord's Prayer. So let's say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thy kingdom come is an opportunity to connect with God, to thoughtfully consider your relationship with God and for you to pray both for yourselves and for others also. As Di says, we're encouraged to pray for five people, if not more. Um, it's important that we reflect on that. But for now, I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you feel close to God in all that you do. But for now, take care and I'll see you soon.